In Christ, victor over sin and death, you're listening to Ancient Faith Radio, your Orthodox Internet Radio Connection. Welcome to Live with the Lowe's with your hosts, Father Nicholas and Dr. Roxanne Lowe, where we will connect our Orthodox faith to -to day-to-day living and relationships to our family, our work, and our view of ourselves. Father Nicholas is the priest at St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, and Dr. Roxanne is a licensed clinical psychologist who uses her extensive training in private practice. Questions are welcome by calling 855-237-2346. That's 855-237-2346. Here now is Father Nicholas and Dr. Roxanne. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Live with the Lowe's. We're so grateful that you're joining us on this Tuesday evening, December 19th, just a few days away from Christmas. I'm joined tonight by my lovely wife and co-host, Dr. Roxanne Lowe. Good to be with you all tonight. And as you many of you know, Roxanne's a clinical psychologist, and I'm the parish priest at St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church right here in Jacksonville, Florida. And if you're new to Live with the Lowe's, one thing that you should know that this is a show that merges both faith and psychology to really give you some practical principles that you can apply and grow in your own walk of faith. That's our dream. That's our desire for all of you. So thanks so much for being with us uh, this evening. You know, we have a number of ways that you can stay uh, connected to us all throughout the week. We're on our social media platforms. Uh, Friends, we're on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and on YouTube. In fact, all of our shows and all of our sermons are archived on the Lowe's YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed, you can do a great favor to all of us by simply subscribing to the Lowe's YouTube channel. And that last name is spelled L-O-U-H-S. And also you can um, download our or receive our daily inspirational messages by going to our website. And again, this is at the Lowe's.com. Simply click on that subscribe button. And all you have to do is simply put in your email address and every morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, you'll receive that day's daily inspirational message. And I know, Roxanne, many people receive those messages and have written back how beneficial they are. And that's really Absolutely. what Absolutely. Our- we want to give a shout out, too, to all of you who've written in. I mean, there's been so many emails, haven't been able to, to respond to all of them. But we, we just want to say thank you because we read each and every one of your feedbacks. And um, they've just been uh, so encouraging and um, directed us in areas you want more of and um, areas you are wanting to hear about. So we're just thankful. Thank you for, for, for keeping us going. Absolutely. And, I, and again, I just invite you, if you haven't or are not receiving them, definitely go to our website, thelows.com, click on the subscribe button, and all you have to do is simply put in your email address and every morning, in fact, tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., you'll receive our daily inspirational message. And as always, if you're looking for some last-minute Christmas gifts, one of the things that we would recommend is go to the Ancient Faith Bookstore. There's so much material that's out there, guys, that's so helpful in your own walk of faith. Um, our book, Renewing You, is a book that um, has been um, a been at Ancient Faith. We, it was actually published through Ancient Faith. And the proceeds from this book, as many of you already know, because you've, you've purchased the book, but goes to the American Cancer Society in honor and in memory of our fathers. In fact, that was the impetus behind us writing this book. So if you're looking for a last minute little stocking stuffer, go to um, store.ancientfaith.com. That's store.ancientfaith.com forward slash renewing you. And if you're looking for that a book that would be, I think, very helpful, especially as we're coming into the new year, check out Renewing You. As always, we'd love to hear from all of you during our conversation uh, tonight, which is going to be a very interesting and very powerful conversation. You can do so by calling us at 1-855-237-2346. That's one 855 237-2346, or feel free to email me during the live broadcast of our show by emailing me at ask, that's A-S-K at ancientfaith.com. So friends, let's get started. You know, parenting, as we all know, and I know Roxanne and I um, are so blessed to have two children that are ages 16 and 14, but to be honest with you, although it's a great blessing, it's a gift, a true gift from God, it's also very difficult. It's challenging. Um, I think that one of the greatest things that we can do, obviously, is to raise our children in the way in which our Lord desires for us to do so. 
Let's not make a mistake. Parenting is so hard. And for many of us, we're trying to manage all these different aspects of our life. We're managing uh, what I call ourselves sometimes being the Uber driver. We're just kind of driving our children from one event to one practice to one performance um, to taking care of their uh, helping them with their homework or guiding them on that. Dealing with the social media pressures that also come along with that. And also just trying to manage, you know, what they're going through on a day-to-day basis. But what about us? What about having that peace that we all yearn for as parents and guiding in our children? How can we talk about, you know, embracing the Prince of Peace at this Christmas season when for many of us as parents, it could be a season that's really filled with a great deal of chaos. And so tonight we thought we'd dedicate a show to acquiring what we're calling acquiring the spirit of peace as parents. And we've invited a dear friend of ours, Dr. Sophie Osme, to be with us this evening. And let me tell you a little bit about her, because I think her, um, just her, her bio is so important and so powerful, and I think that she'll be such a beneficial host and, uh, sorry, a guest on our show. But let me tell you a little bit about her. She's a licensed clinical psychologist who currently works in private practice. She earned her doctorate in clinical psychology from Wheaton College. She enjoys offering her expertise uh, in integrating, integrating faith into the therapeutic process to facilitate healing and growth. She has taught undergraduate and graduate psychology and counseling courses and provided clinical supervision. She has a passion for serving and training. She enjoys leading workshops and speaking on a variety of mental health and parenting topics. That's why we wanted her on the show tonight, in addition to her active service in her church community. She, too, is married to a priest, Father Samuel, and together enjoying the adventure of parenting their three daughters. So, Dr. Sophie, welcome to Live with the Lowe's. Thank you so much for having me, Father Nicholas and Dr. Roxanne. It's a pleasure to be here. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us as well. So let's just kind of like really start from the very beginning. And, and let's just like, why are we talking? Why is this topic about the spirit of peace and the context of parenting so important? Well, uh, when I think of uh, that phrase, acquiring the spirit of peace, mm-hmm. uh, there's a quote that comes to mind, and it's a popular quote. It's a quote by Saint Seraphim of Sarov that says, acquire the spirit of peace and a mm-hmm. thousand souls around you will be saved. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm really drawn to that quote and I, I find it inspiring. And while as a parent, I don't necessarily, uh, I'm not aiming to save a thousand souls, mm-hmm. but I'm definitely interested in the souls of the ones that are entrusted to me, um, mm-hmm. who happen to be in my household. Mm-hmm. So if acquiring the spirit of peace can aid in saving the souls of my own children, then I think it's not just wonderful, but also wise Mm -hmm. um, to reflect on how we as parents can acquire that spirit of peace in our homes. And, you know, when we're talking about the spirit of peace, we're ultimately talking about the Holy Spirit, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And and, uh, the peace that is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're we're also called to be peacemakers, right? We're called to be peacemakers by Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Christ said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Um, And when we think of peacemakers, who are they? They are are the ones that have uh, the peace of God or the Holy Spirit within them, but then they're able to spread that peace to those around them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's part of our identity, actually, as children of God, right? To be peacemakers, to be spreading peace. Mm-hmm. And so it's one of our calls as parents, right, is to acquire that peace, uh, to seek that inner peace, and to be able mm-hmm. to spread that peace um, in our homes to, our, to our, you know, with, with our children. I love, you know, how the first parts of the Divine Liturgy says that for the peace from above and the salvation mm-hmm. of our souls, this having this kind of heavenly or godly peace and how we're praying that from the very beginning. And so many of the services in the Orthodox Church have that, you know, uh, begin with those three, really this initially three litanies um, or petitions, I should say, that are all about peace. Uh, and I mm-hmm. think, I know, Roxanne, you were going to talk about just the this this notion of having this heavenly peace. Well, you know, I think it's interesting because, you know, as you come to the table, you think about peace. Uh, you know, I think so much of the time we come into marriage with different levels of valuing that peace or even being used to peace. 
Um, you know, you have those who, you know, listen, you know, they even listen to certain types of music because they value tranquility, they value peace, and you can see it in every expression in the way that they sort of move through life. And then mm -hmm. you have other people who, whose music choice might be very, very different, you know, loud. And, you know, maybe they grew up in a home that was used to a lot of external chaos. And, you know, I think it's interesting that I sometimes see a very big difference in terms of the value people even place as they come into marriage on on having peace. And they don't necessarily recognize when peace has been lost, you know, when there is that shift in the, you know, emotional climate that we exist and, you know, it's not even necessarily noticed because perhaps in their, you know, upbringing, it was a very chaotic or, or stressful, lots going on, you know, overstimulated environment. And so, you know, how do you, how do you sort of merge that in terms of um, working with parents who may come from different backgrounds, different, you know, uh, you know, environments that they adapted to and now like, you know, the value of peace is something that, almost has to be taught or merged mm -hmm. or, you know, made aware of in people who, who just may not have that same value or may not have that same awareness. Yeah, I mean, you, you're so right. When we look at our culture today, um, it's, there's so much going on that is so counter peace. There's mm -hmm. so much that is there that is grabbing our attention in a way that disrupts peace. Right, mm -hmm. uh, and so you're right. There are people who um, who think that's that's the norm because that's the that's the environment, that's the culture that they grew up in. But the reality is, I think there is a sense of um, earning, it, er, you know, that that we do need peace. Something mm -hmm. is missing when we don't have that peace. Uh, and so, it actually it, we know that peace like we said it's it's a it's a fruit of the spirit and so it's not something that we can just make up right, right. and and just right. create on our own it's something that needs to be um it's a gift really of the holy spirit uh and it's you know when so when you're saying how do we merge that if if one one person is able to model that right is if is able to show the difference when one is living in peace that becomes appealing. Again, it becomes like, hey, I want some of that, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, and so modeling in our homes the value of peace and choosing actions that align with that. And that includes, like you were saying, the choices of the music that we listen to, right? The choices mm -hmm. of uh, the, the media that we expose ourselves to, um, you know, our actions, our our. Um, the way we speak to one another, the tone, the, the sense of urgency and hurry or versus the calmness that we bring to our daily lives. So it's in the everyday choices that we make that we're able to model that. And I believe that part of that modeling is what's going to attract those that are in our household to like, oh, I want more of that. Absolutely. And so, you know, moving into sort of how we how we acquire this spirit of peace, it, it sounds like, you know, some of it may be an uphill climb for people whose dispositions may work against that, you know, even like, you know, the type A person who's very time urgent, you know, has this sort of strong sense of, you know, urgency or the, the task over person, person who's, you know, letting the problem to be solved become more important than the person who's standing right in front of them. Um, and, you know, I think that sometimes we, we battle, you know, mm -hmm. maybe we could talk a little bit about that, but, you know, we may battle and have to have some of our own self-awareness of, hey, what what am I bringing to the table from a dispositional standpoint that, that could be making this harder for me to connect to the peace that the Holy Spirit yearns for us to have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're, you know, absolutely right when it comes to the fact that we do need awareness um, in, in order for us to even reflect on that. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, I mean, parenting, parenting is very, is very humbling. Like Father Nicholas was saying in the intro, it's a very, it's a very difficult uh, endeavor. Uh, it's not something that uh, by any means, you know, one can say um, they're an expert at it. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever met a parent who's, who says, who claims they're an expert on parenting, right. mm -hmm. um, you know, and so it's, it's, and it's, so it's not something that we can do on our own. It's something that we do need God's help with. And um, one, of, one of the verses that I really like when it comes to that, you know, acquiring peace 
is a verse that's found in Isaiah 26. It says, uh, you will keep him in perfect peace Mm -hmm. whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And so if you look at that verse, first of all, it acknowledges that perfect, you know, peace comes from God, right? Uh, So you will keep him in perfect peace. But then the second part of it where it says whose mind is stayed on you Mm -hmm. is uh, implied in that that we do have an ability to reflect on where is our mind stayed on, right? Mm. And so that, that's or the how part quickly of that it awareness. goes away from that, right? Exactly. Like, you know, the exactly. second our child disrespects us and we take it personally, yes. our, I, I don't know that our mind stays on him in that mm-hmm. moment, right? No. It quickly so, shifts. Exactly. And so where is our mind in those situations? Are we not? And so part of that are, you know, our, our ability to notice where are my thoughts? Where are my feelings? Where am I, again, tangled up in all these like stories of how my child may have come across as being disrespectful or unappreciative or irresponsible or whatever it may be, right? Mm-hmm. Or um, am I able to shift back and set my mind on, on God, right? And so there's implied again in that verse is that we have that ability first to notice, right? And then to choose where to keep our mind set, uh, mm-hmm. And so, uh, and so part of that is, you know, as parents who's, who are striving um, to acquire that spirit of peace is to learn skills to be able to push some sort of a reset button. I like mm-hmm. to call it as a, you know, a reset button. And that can look, you know, for different people, it can look differently. But, um, you know, it could be even just taking a moment to take a deep breath, right? It could be, um, you know, taking a moment to say the Jesus prayer. Um, you know, some way to ground yourself or, or anchor yourself. And to me, that's sort of like a, um, a version of re- a pushing a reset button to kind of reset the focus back on God, because mm-hmm. then we're able to go to that third part, which is um, of that verse where it says, because he trusts in you, when we reshift or refocus to God, then we're able to say, okay, I'm not in control of, you know, how my my kids um, react or behaving or any of that. I'm in control of myself. And so I need to get recentered, right, and trust God in helping me choose what I need to be doing in this moment that will help teach my kids something or help me to model something or help me to, to guide, you know, my kids in whatever it is that they're struggling with. And so that's a way to, again, be able to have that awareness, right? To see, like, where am I? Absolutely. And what do I need to do? And in the, in, you know, you know, having that self-awareness, I mean, I think is what helps us create a boundary, right? Where something can be happening on the outside of us, but it is not destroying what's on the inside of us. Mm-hmm. You know, I, we joke in our house, I have the, I'll make sort of this motion with my hands around me, I'll say force field, force field. It's almost <laughs> like, you know, nothing can come in. Um, and, you know, I may be joking with whatever it is that's coming it's on the outside. It's often directed towards me. It's but mostly that's directed that. toward my husband. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's sort of a... It, in, in many ways, um, it's a lighthearted way of sort of like, this is where I stop and you begin and whatever's mm-hmm. happening on the outside. Uh, you know, and I don't know if you do this as a, as a mother too, mm-hmm. um, Dr. Sophie, but there's a moment where I, if something is happening with my child in, in a, a lot of emotion, you know, there's a step back within me where I stop that emotion from coming on the inside of me to the point where I may lose my focus or take something personal or become very reactive to it. Because if I start to feel it, if I start to let in that emotion, it comes past the force field, then I am no longer really able to let them borrow my calm or borrow my problem solving or borrow my perspective. And I feel like so often when kids are really reactive, what they need to do is borrow our, you know, our reasoning, our perspective taking, we need to borrow our grounding. Um, and so I think in, in that self-awareness sort of helps us uphold the boundaries where, you know, just because something's happening on the outside of us doesn't mean that it has to come on the inside. The child can be not okay, and I can stay okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm probably going to be in a, a better, you know, 
space to be able to actually help them mm -hmm. than if I start to feel what they feel. And that I don't think that's easy. I, I, I would say that that's something probably over 15 years I've sort of had to learn because, you, you know, as a parent, you feel very strongly if your child is hurt and pain, you start to feel it. But then, you know, I don't know if you feel that way, Dr. Sophie, but I feel like that compromises our, our judgment or ability to lead or guide or, or give perspective in situations where they really need it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have three children of our own. And, and so, yes, absolutely can relate to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes practice. It takes a lot of awareness. And um, I love what you said that our kids need to borrow. Sometimes they need to borrow our calm. Uh, and if so, if we're not able to recenter, refocus, regain our peace, then we're actually not helping them. Mm -hmm. um, and we're letting, you know, a lot of times when even in our everyday language, when we say things like, well, he made me so angry. Mm -hmm. Well, so what are we saying? Am I saying this person has power, their emotions have power over me, right? And, and so that's where I'm letting their emotions come in and I'm getting tangled up in their emotions. Instead of noticing the anger, noticing the emotion, um, and then from as an, uh, you know, an observer, right? Uh, and then I'm able to come from that grounded place and help my child manage their emotions. One of one of the the statements that I heard many many years ago, and I love you know quoting it all the time, is emotions are indicators; they're not dictators. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. emotions just tell us they're a signal, right? But they don't dictate what we do. Um, and it's so it's really wonderful for us to be able to teach that to our kids, but also to remind ourselves of that. You know, just because my child is anxious right now about something, I don't I may notice my own anxiety coming up as I'm watching my child struggle with something. But my anxiety, that emotion doesn't dictate what I do. Mm -hmm. Right. It just tells me, OK, uh, something's up. Um, you know, I need to be strong right now I need to be that calming presence uh, for my child um, and and that helps me do that which is a lot more effective than getting caught up in right. the emotion and letting the emotion kind of dictate what we do mm -hmm. yeah I think it's a powerful word that you use too that the observer to be an observer I don't think that's you know a, a, so natural for people to be an observer when something's happening, you know, to someone they love, they want to, you know, jump in or affect change with or control outcome of or, you know, calm the situation, remove the emotion. And I think that the ability to be an observer in those moments, mm -hmm. um, while be it not easy is so powerful. The result of that is powerful because, you know, reflections happen, connections happen. And I think they return to calm that much quicker um, when we don't add, you know, fuel or any uh, extra emotion to the situation that that's happening on the outside of us. Yeah, yeah I, I, I couldn't, I, I totally agree with you. And I just want to give a, just a, an announcement a reminder to our listeners tonight that you're more than welcome to join this conversation. If you're a parent uh, or someone that's struggling at this time, just with trying to find that peace as a parent um, and doing as what Dr. Sophie was talking about, this acquiring of the spirit of peace, uh, feel free to call us at 1-855-237-2346. That's 1-855-237-2346. You can also email me a question during the live broadcast of our show by emailing me at ask, that's A-S-K at ancientfaith.com. Uh, you know, I, as you both were talking, I couldn't help but think that you know, so often we tend to think of the the peace being within between a a a, a parent and a child, but you know, oftentimes what's in many ways stealing our peace, which ends up cascading into our relationship with our children, are things that are outside of the home. There are things that we struggle with, maybe at work or just the uh, the stresses that come along with what we're dealing with on a personal level. Um, Doctor Sophie, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on you know for the listeners that are um, that are tuning in this evening. How important is it to be purposeful in um, that self-awareness of, of not only our relationship with our children and um, making sure that we, that we hold on to that peace on ourselves and as a result uh, teach them what that looks like, but also maintaining um, our peace in the turbulence that we're seeing around us. It's the stressful times that tend to come about. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, as you're asking that question, Father Nicholas, um, 
so I got this image, you know, you remember how when, you know, kids are younger and when they like, let's say, you know, a, a toddler falls down. The first thing they do is they look up at their parents' face to see how they react. Mm-hmm. And then they base, oh, like if, if mom looks calm, then it's no big deal. Right. But if mom looks shocked, then I must have, this must be horrible. Right. And they mm-hmm. start crying. <laughs> mm-hmm. So true. And, and so to me, that's a really good reminder. What am I modeling as I'm responding to the news around me, to the circumstances that are outside of our home, Mm -hmm. um, to the stories that we might be hearing because our kids are watching that, right? They're watching our response, our reaction. And they're a lot of times learning how to respond based on how we're responding. Mm. Absolutely. I, I, I love that. Even when you forget something at home, how, how mm-hmm. do we react to that? Because chances are they're going mm-hmm. to become super reactive the next time they do that as well, if it yes. becomes, you know, an all or nothing, you know, response that we have. And so I, I love, love what you're bringing up, because that's also another source of self-awareness. How am I handling my own stress? How am I handling the things that I'm seeing, you know, in the news? You know, what is it doing within me? And how does mm-hmm. that bleed into my family? And how does that actually, you know, what does that teach uh, my children who are who are learning from me in those moments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Doctor Sophie, I you know just to kind of continue on this on this kind of path about with our children's, you know, how do we reflect on why our children are misbehaving? Um, when we see our children misbehaving, you know, how do we deal with that? How do we reflect on that? Yeah. So again, I, so it seems like you know, uh, as you notice, like the theme of what we're talking about so far when it comes to peace. You know, we're talking about this concept of reflection and awareness, mm-hmm. right? And and so when our kids misbehave, we need to also use that same stance of reflecting. So mm-hmm. it, it's it's the stance of I wonder, I wonder why my child is acting this way. You know, I wonder why my child did not finish her homework. Um, you know, I'm wondering why. So it come it becomes more of a curious stance. Uh, and that way, it helps us to reflect on what is going on. Uh, one of the, the, I'm sure maybe you've heard it before, but it's like, I don't know who came up with it, but I've, not me. I just heard it. So I keep repeating mm-hmm. it, uh, which is, you know, get curious, not furious. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this idea of, again, you know, wanting to have a curious stance of like, why is my child, you know, yelling? Why is, instead of getting furious, trying to understand. And um, the, the other, you know, common acronym that's often used in parent is this HALT acronym, H-A-L-T, H-A-L-T um, mm-hmm. the, you know, HALT before you respond to your child. And, and so the HALT is maybe part of the answer of why they're acting that way. So H stands for they're, they're hungry. Um, A is mm-hmm. maybe they're angry at something. Um, L means, you know, it may be lonely. And the T is tired. So HALT, H-A-L-T. Right. And Mm -hmm. so then I would ask myself, you know, is because maybe they're just, you know, uh, uh, they have they're short tempered because they haven't eaten for, you know, five hours. And so Mm. they're they're hungry. Right. Or maybe something happened at school that angered them or maybe their um, friend, um, you know, now they're no longer friends. And so they're feeling Mm -hmm. lonely or they're tired. They didn't sleep well the night before. And so, again, part of that is understanding the why behind mm. why they're misbehaving instead of jumping to a conclusion of oh they're that's being lazy so important right. the what's going on in their world right. you yes. know I, I feel like that's what you're saying is yeah what is going on in their world because i feel like so often with the curious you know stance where parents sometimes go is judgment um they're doing that because they're disrespectful they're yes. doing that because um they're they're lazy they're doing that because they don't care they're doing that because they don't value what I value, you know? And so I feel like sometimes that narrative goes south very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and the judgment then breeds the intensity, the escalation, the emotion, the fire mm-hmm. of how we were then respond to it, which totally misses the mark if they are upset about something that has already happened in their day that we have nothing, no awareness of that. Now we are creating an intensity and fire around something totally unrelated. And right. now the child is, you know, hopeless, helpless, overwhelmed, shut down. Right. And yes. so I think that the beauty of that question is, what is going on in their world? And let's not like answer the curious stance with judgment. 
You know, yeah. let's not take their behavior personally. Um, and I do think so often, you know, as parents, we, we do struggle with that. You know, we take what they're doing personally as it's a personal attack against us or something we stand for when, you know, so often there's just so many other things going on in their world that I think they don't always talk about either. I think it's important to, to sort of assume that you don't know <laughs> because mm-hmm. yeah. they don't always put words to their experiences. Right. And the minute we label their behavior in a negative way, like you said, it um, we lose sight of what's really happening. And then we become, so the focus becomes on us, right? As parents, like, how dare they talk right. to me like this? Or, Correct. you know, they're, they're so, and, and of course, that leads to lack of peace. And when mm-hmm. we're operating from a lack of peace, then again, we're not being very effective. And so... What is the response if this is the internal response of the curiosity and I wonder what's going on in their world and let's have compassion for those things. What should be the words that then follow that curious, reflective, you know, awareness response? What are the words that should then follow in response to the misbehavior? Hmm. Well, once we understand you know, what, like, you know, what's happening in their world, what is going on, then we're able to address that, right? So it doesn't become about us. And so it becomes about their struggle and what they're going through, right? And so, so part of that then is um, helping them understand that we, we get, we understand where they're coming from, right? So it's helping them feel that they're seen, that they're being heard. Um, And then, once we're able to connect, then we're able to teach. Okay, so if, if it's, for example, um, they, this is the fifth time they mm-hmm. haven't finished their homework, <laughs> um, you know, and so maybe it's because they're finding this subject matter or whatever it is that they're covering right now very difficult for them, and they're embarrassed by it. And so it's not necessarily you know, laziness or lack of responsibility, but maybe it's feeling of shame or feeling embarrassed about the fact that they feel they don't, they aren't smart enough. And so then we're able to, once we get to the core of what's going on, then we're able to address that. Okay. Well, what are some tools that we could use to help? What are, let's, let's focus, focus more on problem solving as opposed to, again, judging the child. Yeah, the mm-hmm. problem solving. And I love that that's followed by connection because it's really hard to problem solve with anyone that you're not connected to. If your child feels on an opposite side of the fence from you, you know, they're, yes. they certainly don't aren't going to walk down the problem solving because um, they're not on common ground with us, right? And so yeah. I love that uh, focus on, on connection uh, first. Um, and sometimes just entering that emotional space sometimes just opens up a whole conversation that has nothing to do with what they didn't do or what they mm-hmm. did exactly. wrong. And you, you just start to see their vulnerability in, in really beautiful ways um, that they weren't able to talk about, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, and, and part of that, too, is when we're connecting, we're able to calm the emotion and allow the thinking part of their brains to operate <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right, because mm-hmm. when their when their emotions are escalated, they're not thinking logically, and so we can't really problem solve at that, that at that point, right? So we need to first connect because that calms the nervous system, that calms the emotion, and then it lets their their thinking part of the brain come come online, right? And so then we're able to actually problem solve and able to address what's really happening. Yeah, it's like how we oftentimes say the. Let's connect before we correct. Correct. Um, yeah. I, I I love what you're sh- what you're both sharing, and I, I have a question, but I want to before I ask this question, I definitely want to remind our listeners tonight that if you'd like to ask a question to Doctor Sophie about parenting, um, maybe you're struggling just in general with parenting, um, or struggling maybe today just to have that this piece seems that we're talking about seems so foreign, so distant from where you are right now. Feel free to call us and, and speak with Doctor Sophie. You can call us at one eight five five. 237-2346. Well, uh, again, it's 1-855-237-2346. As well as you can email us during the live broadcast of our show by emailing us at ask at ancientfaith.com. That's A-S-K at ancientfaith.com. You know, Dr. Sophie, I, I can't help but think, we, we talked about this a few moments ago, but I really like to dig, dig a little bit deeper into this topic of self-awareness and being aware of, of how we are. Because 
we can't give what we don't have. In other words, if we don't, we talk about this desire to give or or share with our our children, um, and I would argue even our spouse, this level of peace. But if we don't have it, you know, we we, we can't. It's hard, obviously, to give it because you don't have it. Um, but ultimately, I think what's so often happening in people is this spiritual battle, the spiritual warfare that we oftentimes talk about, where we begin become so distracted with the ways of the world that we find ourselves in all these different main directions, and especially as parents, we're we're constantly trying to, you know, there's so much pressure just to simply be a parent to have our children to, uh, uh, you know, achieve these certain academic roles or, and and uh, and goals in their lives, but also to raise you know great children, which are things that we obviously want to be doing, godly children. Um, but with that being said, though, how would you encourage a listener tonight? to pause and have that self-awareness throughout their day. Because so much of our church and so much of the tradition of our faith is not only about, you know, having that self-awareness when it comes to peace, but really just a self-awareness in general in Mm -hmm. our own walk of faith. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, when we talk about self-awareness, it's the the term that comes to mind um, from an Orthodox perspective is this idea of watchfulness, Mm -hmm. right? This idea that we're, we're awake, right? We're not just kind of going on autopilot. We're being watchful in Mm -hmm. our decision-making and the choices that we make. And so that is um, our ability to be able to, you know, grow in self-awareness and and have Mm -hmm. that um, and practice that. And so part of that is um, when we are, during the day, finding ways to pause and ask yourself, why, why am I acting like let's say I get a phone call and then I get upset Mm -hmm. okay why why did I just get upset you know what was it about that phone call that ruffled some feathers right Mm -hmm. uh when you know my spouse says something to me that you know I'm like hmm I don't know if I like that (laughs) why and so again having that curious stance with ourselves too right like why am Mm -hmm. I acting this way why am I feeling this way and then being able, again, to observe. So it's that observant stance, like I'm watching it as if I'm watching a movie um, mm-hmm. and, and distancing myself from that. Because then I'm able to decide, well, what do I do with that information instead of letting that story or what's happening be, again, the dictator, right, telling me what to do or how to act or what I'm supposed to do. So finding ways during my day to just pause and reflect on whatever thoughts I'm having right now, right? Whatever feelings I'm having right now to like take that observer kind of stance, that watchful stance and to see like, what is this? Why Mm. is this coming up? And what do I do with it? And what, when I ask myself, what do I do with it? Then I need to be clear. Like if um, I value peace as, you know, a value that I want to be able to live by, then what is an action that I could do that aligns with that, right? And so, mm. so maybe right now that means I need to say a kind word, right? Because that aligns with the value of peace. Um, I don't let the story, I don't let what the circumstances, I don't let those things tell me what to do, mm-hmm. right? And part of that is, you, you know, uh, practicing um, these reset button types of moments to, throughout our day. So like I said, whether it's, on a regular basis, trying to incorporate the Jesus prayer. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the practices that I teach my clients is, um, and this comes from, from act. It's a, it's a skill that's called dropping anchor and, and dropping anchor. You could do this any, basically anytime uh, during, during the day, but it's basically a way it's a a three-step process where you're able to acknowledge. So that it's the acronym for dropping anchor is ACE, A-C-E. So A is Mm. you acknowledge whatever thoughts, emotions are coming up for you in that Mm -hmm. moment. Um, And then the C is you connect with your body. So you do something with, you know, whether it's taking a deep breath, whether it's stretching, whether it's saying the Jesus prayer. And then the E is connect, is, is engaging your senses. So what am I seeing right now? What am I hearing right now? And what is that, that this is all about getting yourself back into the present moment. And so when we're talking about self-awareness, when we're talking about watchfulness, we are talking about ways to practice being in the present moment 
where we're not distracted by our past or worries mm -hmm. about the future, right? And so this is just one example of one way to practice presence, you know, being in the present. And I think, you know, to do any of this, th there needs to be that value of peace. And, yeah. you know, I think that it's so easy for so many, you know, people, if, when they feel stressed, or they feel angry, or they feel upset by something to want to stay there, you know, uh, they mm. feel righteous, and they're upset mm. from work, or they feel, uh, you know, I, I need to be in this angry state, I want to stay in this angry state. I don't know that there's always this return, this in intrinsic desire to return to peace, even when you know it's lost, even when you see and notice, oh, it, I've lost it. I feel people struggle with the desire to want to get back peace. And so, you know, I think that's something I would ask everyone to sort of also think about is, you know, can I say that I truly value peace? Our faith, we're called to be peacemakers. Blessed right. are the peacemakers. We're called to constantly seek the peace of the Holy Spirit. And um, I think our flesh really like messes with us in these times, you know, mm -hmm. because the spirit doesn't want to stay there, but sometimes our flesh does. And, um, and I think that's something we have to really be honest with ourselves, you know, honest enough to say, am I choosing, you know, to allow this to continue to stay here? Have I chosen to allow it? Because if that's the case, no tool is going to help us come back to a piece that we are not seeking. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, kind of in line with that, you know, what would you say to, to folks who are asking, like, how do we really nurture emotional intelligence? I mean, this is a big, that's a big topic, you know, mm. this emotional intelligence is a huge, huge topic. Um, but maybe you could kind of, you know, gloss over some of the, the big picture items on, on how we nurture emotional intelligence in our days, in our weeks, and in our lives? Yeah, it, it is definitely a big topic. Um, but to put it simply, I mean, what is emotional intelligence? You know, a, a simple definition, if you will, would be, mm -hmm. so it's, it's our ability to manage our emotions um, to, and to be able to connect with others well. So there's like two parts of it, like being able to self-regulate and manage our own emotions well. And then because of that, we're able to connect with others well. And so implied in that, right, is awareness, what we've been talking about, right, that awareness of um, our emotions, uh, our ability to um, feel other people's emotions, so empathy, um, and our ability to see like how that, how our actions, our behaviors, our decisions have an impact, not just on us, but on others as well. Right. And mm -hmm. so in doing that, right, we can't teach something like we've been talking if we're not modeling it. Right. So mm -hmm. in self-regulating our, you know, as parents in modeling how we're managing our emotions. So when I say something like, I am really upset right now to my own kids. You know, if I say it, I'm really upset right now and I need some time to calm down so that I can think clearly about what I need to do. That's me trying to model what do I do when I'm feeling upset, right? So we want to be able to find opportunities to model that to our own kids. Um, when I make a mistake, like how do I, how do I, talk to myself when I make a mistake, you know, in front of my kids, because they're, they're watching and they're learning from that. Right. I mean, I, I recall uh, when they were younger and I'm, you know, driving around town, if I make a wrong turn, I would um, try to you know, <laughs> say things out loud to say, Oh, oops, I made the wrong turn. I guess now I need to find, mm -hmm. make a U-turn. Like I would say that stuff out loud <laughs> and make it sound like it's no big, we all make mistakes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then figure out a way to correct these mistakes. Like it's not the end of the world when we make a mistake. Um, and so modeling that to our kids. And how um, important is it if we can capitalize on this for a moment to actually mm -hmm. name the feelings that we are actually having 
you know, because so often parents, you know, who are clearly upset, miserable, Mm -hmm. stressed, uh, will say, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And what does that communicate to kids? First of all, creates like incredible anxiety because they did seeing something that they can't name. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, but like, let's talk about that for a moment. You know, how easy it is for parents to say, I'm fine. When, you know, part of emotional intelligence and being able to manage our emotions and regulate our emotions is first being able to to name them, mm-hmm. you yes. know, and that that's not a bad thing to say to your children, you know, what you actually feel and, and may actually ease their anxiety because there's a little bit maybe of consistency from what they're feeling and what you're saying to them. And there is power. There is power in naming our emotions, right? Mm-hmm. First, it helps our kids to be able to name their own emotions. Otherwise, you know, you see all these grown people now who don't even, who can't identify what they're feeling, right? Because they've never been, they've never seen that um, growing up or they've never had an opportunity to learn how to do that, right? And so mm. it's, as parents, we need to practice that and teach our kids on how to to name their own emotions. And so when when I'm upset, instead of just saying I'm fine, you're right, I, I would actually say, you know, I'm I'm disappointed right now or, um, well, that was embarrassing, you know, mm-hmm. so like talking about how I'm feeling and when our kids are going through something to help them name what they're going through helps them with their emotional intelligence because then they have a name for it. And once you have a name for it, it kind of discharges the power mm-hmm. that that emotion can have over you because then it's not the emotion again that's in control, right? If you have a name for it, you're in, you're in control, <laughs> And and I think in that, you know, parents have to sort of manage their own, you know, reactions to their kids having feelings. You know, sometimes I, I see a lot of parents who don't want to allow their kids to feel. There's no acceptable emotion other than, you know, peaceful, respectful, kind, you know, compassionate humans. But that's not life. You know, mm-hmm. we have all kinds of emotions, some deep, some dark, some negative, some, you know, we're we're constantly, you know, vacillating through the wheel of emotions, right? And so I I think sometimes parents are uncomfortable if kids are experiencing an emotion that isn't peaceful, or that Mm -hmm. isn't, um, they deem, you know, okay. And so I I, I just as a shout out to, to parents who are doing them, I think it's wonderful to allow kids to say no, you know, to choose, to be disappointed, to, to, to not like something. And I think that the collateral damage I see in kids who were not allowed to feel or not allowed to have a bad mood or not allowed to say how they feel or they can't choose anything as adults and they have no boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's a real struggle for them to identify what they feel and what they need in relationships and they don't have a boundary. Um, and so, you know, for for parents everywhere who struggle with their kids feeling anything that isn't, you know, perfect and wonderful and kind, you know, that's what they need to actually know themselves Mm -hmm. and to be able to voice that later on, you know, in relationships. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's actually disempowering when kids aren't able to name their emotions. And so parents, um, it, it does take courage for some parents who may feel uncomfortable with emotions that may seem difficult. You know, parents don't like seeing their kids struggle, right? right. Uh, but it's, it's actually empowering to help our kids learn that it's okay to have emotions. Um, you know, I often say emotions are like wet the weather. You can't really control the weather, but then you decide like, okay, so it's rainy. What do I need to do about that? Mm-hmm. And it may, may not be something we move on from so quickly, you know, um, and sometimes we name it the expectations we're ready to move on from it sometimes that sadness may not pass till the morning and and that's and that's okay we wake up refreshed and and everyone's in a in a better place um but we did have an email question that came in that i'm going to kind of summarize because i think it relates to the next question we want to ask about really disciplining in peace mm-hmm. but you know the writer talks about her 14 year old um who's quite challenging um and breaks boundaries often in different surroundings um and can be oppositional at times And um, when you have a particular child, she says, who's doing the opposite to most of your instructions and enjoys stirring up trouble with their siblings, you know, what can you do? Um, How can you react as a parent um, in a a helpful way? 
Yeah, that's and that's difficult, right? When our kids are acting in a way that seems to be disruptive and maybe even um, harmful for for themselves, right? If they're hurting themselves or they're hurting other family members. Um, so the first thing, obviously, is to make sure that safety is addressed. And um, when uh, we're trying to discipline, again, we want to be able to discipline from a place of peace. So what that means is we don't want to be reactive. We want to be able to respond to what is going on so that we're mm-hmm. able to redirect our, our children. We're able to teach them instead of reacting to their behavior. Um, and so... Again, it starts with our own reflection on our inner state. We need to make sure that we're parenting from a calm place, Mm -hmm. right? And then um, often when kids are acting in ways that tend to be disruptive or, you know, they're misbehaving, it's so easy for us as parents to focus on all that is going wrong and all the things Mm -hmm. that they're not doing right that we miss the every once in a while when they actually do <laughs> what, what they're supposed to do, right? Uh, we, we, don't, we don't even notice that when we, and we don't show our kids that we notice it. Mm-hmm. Um, what we give our attention to has a huge power. It shapes our kids' behaviors. Mm. You know, it's, it's what, you know, the, the saying, you know, what, we, what you focus on, you get more of, right? Mm-hmm. And so if we catch our kids doing we're acting in a way that aligns with our values, right? They're being loving. They're being kind. Uh, they were generous at some point. Uh, let's point that out. You know, let's right. celebrate that. Let's help mm-hmm. them see that they made, a, you know, a wise choice. And let's focus on the values that we want to be able to, to teach them. So, again, if it's values aligned with peace and, and patience and kindness and, and self-control, um, then let's, these are the words that need to be coming out of our mouths, right? Like, let's say, um, hey, uh, use kind words instead of saying, you know, stop talking like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, I oftentimes, you know, we've done like several different parenting, um, you know, discussions here and I on the show. And one of the things I love to tell people is that, you know, one of the things that we've tried to practice in our home, and we definitely don't always get this right, but we kind of share with our children not what they not we don't tend to focus on what they've done, but we focus on who they are called to become, and mm-hmm. really kind of highlighting how Christ sees them as opposed to honing in and focusing on the mistakes that that they make. And we have found it to be so much more beneficial to them when they see themselves in relationship to how Christ sees them, yeah. as opposed to constantly reminding them of a mistake that they've made or a you know or or just kind of attacking the the problem as opposed to who 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 they're called to be. I love that. You know, you know, l- let me, you know, obviously we talk about our children, you know, making mistakes and how do we discipline in that, um, uh, you know, in that piece. But I also would love to kind of talk about how, how do we handle, you know, us as parents when we make mistakes? Um, how do we make sure that we, how do we help ourselves to regain that peace? Yeah, well, hey, the reality is we're not perfect. Uh, like I said before, I, you know, mm-hmm. I know in the intro, Father Nicholas, you, you said, quote, unquote, I'm like an expert. I am not an expert mm-hmm. <laughs> when it comes to parenting. <laughs> I, you know, I'm still learning how to, how to parent as with each of my kids as we go right. through different seasons in, in their lives. Right. And so recognize that, that we're not perfect. Perfection is not the goal here. Right. Uh, we're human beings and we make mistakes and so then it becomes, what do I do with that? What do I do with these mistakes? Mm-hmm. Um, how do I respond when I've said something in anger to one of my kids, right? And so then I could see that as, you know, an opportunity. This is an opportunity for me to, to again, model uh, what it, you know, what it looks like to apologize, what it looks like to seek forgiveness, um, mm-hmm what it looks like to, to repent when we make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's one of the, 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 you know, the reminders whenever I work with parents is, hey, there are no perfect parents and there are no perfect kids. So let's just kind of accept that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then, so then we're able to address, okay, mistakes will happen. Now what? 
right? right? And, and the now what is, okay, we reset, we uh, refocus, and we ask God for help. We ask God for forgiveness. We ask our kids to forgive us. And then we ask him, you know, ask God for that guidance and the wisdom on how to handle things better um, and learn, learn from our mistakes. I mean, that is, there's no sense in living in our imperfections and in our mistakes and feeling sure. like, okay, it's, we're stuck because, hey, um, there's parenting is about growing. It's, it's actually, like I said, it's parenting is very humbling. And part of that is it is a mirror of the areas that we need to grow <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Like, hey, if I need to be uh, more patient, parenting is going to show me that, right? right? And it's going to provide the opportunity for me to practice that. Mm -hmm. And just in the last few minutes of our show, um, I'd love to just sort of get your nuggets of wisdom here on, on how we really empower children to make wise choices. I know we've talked a lot about how to respond to poor choices, mm -hmm. but how do we empower our children to actually make wise choices? Yeah, so that, you know, that got, goes back to this, uh, going back to our ability to reflect. And so mm -hmm. helping our kids cultivate that ability, right, to be able to reflect and to be able to, um, again, take more of a, that curious stance and see like, okay, um, I do have a choice, like actually helping them realize that they do have choices. And part of actually going back to um, even starting from a younger age, we want to be able to give our kids opportunities to make choices, mm -hmm. right? And so it, when they're younger, it, it starts with the simple things like, hey, do you want to wear this, the blue shirt or the red shirt, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But it gives them an opportunity to practice that muscle of making a choice, making a decision. Um, and then as they get older, you know, we're able to... Um, help them reflect on their behaviors, what it is that's happening inside of them that made, you know, that led them to make a choice. Um, and when they do make a mistake, right, involving them in the discipline process. So, you know, we talked about problem solving. And so problem solving is part of that discipline process. Like, hey, okay, well, now this happened you know, what do you think we need to work on? What are some things that you can do mm -hmm. so that you don't keep forgetting your, your homework, right? That you don't mm -hmm. keep, um, you know, getting angry at your, your brother or your sister mm -hmm. uh, when they do this. And so what are some ways and help them in a safe kind of context and in the safety of the relationship between you and, and them reflect and problem solve and brainstorm um, and learn from that process. Mm -hmm. And so, but the underlying piece of that, the kids aren't going to be able to do this if we don't have a strong relationship with them. So the first step is making sure that we are investing in our relationship with them so that we can foster that process. And actually, I mean, the, the, the brain research shows the more connection there is between um, parents and, and their kids, the more connection there is in their brain. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> right it's and so, so you know and so that's part of their ability to make wise choices is so it actually has a relationship between how we're relating with them how how close do they feel to us how loved do they feel um and that helps them develop those muscles to be able to to choose that's better. extraordinary that's amazing how god has created us um, isn't it yeah uh, it's amazing i'm always I, amazed by those facts Dr. Sophie, we are so um, just blessed and honored that, I mean, I'm looking at on YouTube and there's just one after another, just gratitude for this show tonight. And I'm just so grateful that you've taken the time to be with us this evening. And I definitely would want to invite you um, for future shows um, to be here on Live with the Lowe's. I know the information that you shared with our listeners tonight is so invaluable. And so thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. Love to be back. Um, absolutely wonderful having this thank you I'd love to have you and, and please give our love to father samuel as well and just well, thank too. him as well for, for your time and you know in our few, last few moments of our show i do want to take this opportunity to thank um the producer of our show matushka trudy who uh, many of you know um uh, she produces every one of the shows here on ancient faith and does just an extraordinary job and i just want to thank her um for all that she does and uh, just an amazing amazing woman of faith 
I also want to just remind you all, if you're looking for a Christmas gift or looking for a last minute thing to put in that stocking, um, definitely check out our book, Renewing You, A Priest, A Psychologist, and a Plan. It came out a couple of years ago. All the proceeds of this money go towards outreach ministries, and specifically the American Cancer Society. So you can find our book going to the store dot ancientfaith.com forward slash renewing you or just simply putting renewing you on the ancient faith website you'll find all about the book it's a very um we hope it would be very beneficial to all of you and if you're looking for those daily words of uh, encouragement from us definitely go to our website at the lows.com forward slash subscribe and share this show i know that many parent many parents will benefit greatly from this show so you will have we will have this show archived on our Lowe's YouTube channel. So just definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Lowe's and encourage your friends to do so as well. Everyone, on behalf of just Roxanne and myself, I just want to wish you all a Merry, Merry Christmas. And we will be taking next week off to honor the season of Christmas, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks with a brand new show from Live with the Lowe's. So God bless you all, everyone, and stay strong in your walk of faith. Father Nick and Dr. Roxanne are the authors of the book, Renewing You, a priest, a psychologist, and a plan, which can be purchased at store.ancientfaith.com. Their daily inspirational messages can be found at thelows.com slash subscribe. Be sure also to search for The Lows on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Live with The Lows is a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.